Hey, this is Old Man Metal. I hope everyone's doing well, and welcome to the 17th episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. So thank you for joining me today, and thanks to AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That's from a song called Through the Electric Mist. AJ is a great guitarist and independent musician, and he's been providing music for the show since day one, so thanks to him. Please go check him out. The link to his channel is in the show notes below. So today we're looking at my top 10 album list for 2023. Like always, it premiered on New Year's Day on Twitter as a countdown. And this episode is the same list, but with a bit more detail because I'm not limited to 280 characters here. And yes, I called it Twitter. Fuck X. It's like Elon Musk and Zuckerberg had a competition to see who could come up with the dumbest new website name, and they both won. The fact is, neither one of them would know what X was if Charles Manson was eating Fruit Loops on their front porch, so... The hell with them, I'm going to keep calling it Twitter. So, without further digression, rounding out the bottom at number 10 is Barbaric Torment from Skeletal Throne. This is Skeletal Throne's sophomore LP, and it is every bit as good as their 2020 debut, Human Deterioration. In fact, it absolutely rips, just as expected. Skeletal Throne have picked up a fourth member since their debut, but their winning formula hasn't changed. Blistering, riffy, verse chorus death thrash goodness with an extra side of thrash, sick death metal vocals, and bruising old school death metal drumming. They combine the best riffing styles from both parents, employing an effective and varied blend of neck snapping syncopated chugs, crushing power chord savagery, brutal tech death monstrosities, groovy cannibal struts, a bit of tremolo picking, and then even more ass kicking thrash chugs, and some tasty lead work too. Really tasty. But the emphasis here is on the riffs, and that's as it should be. Good death thrash should always make you want to break shit, and that means riffs. But the drumming is every bit on point as well, and that's also as it should be. You can't have good death thrash without a proper bludgeonous death metal rhythm foundation, and Skeletal Throne have that in spades. The production is consonant with old school thrash, and brings out the aggressiveness of the music quite nicely. It's properly top end oriented, nicely abrasive, and has some extra crunch in the guitar tone, everything you could ask for. Vicious, battering, and razor sharp. If Death Thrash is your bag, this one cannot miss. Standout tracks are Internal Suffocation, Burn the Cross, and Skeletal Throne. Coming in at number nine is War Remains. This is the third LP from Richmond's Enforced, and you can always count on them to put out a top 10 album. Enforced play that unique blend of thrash and crossover that Power Trip made famous, and when it's done right, it is one of the most powerful, viscerally motivating hybrids in the entire metal genre. And of course, Enforced do it well. Quite well, in fact. And that's why they keep making so many top 10 lists. While half the albums on my top 10 list you won't see many other places, maybe, Enforced always make a lot of people's lists. The universal appeal? This style is vicious, hyperkinetic, and stuffed with vertebra-breaking riffs. It takes the best riffing from thrash and crossover, like high-impact down-pick palm-muted thrash riffs and big weighty power chord bruisers, plus just a bit of Bay Area new wave of british ocity and that unique, maniacal, bouncy, syncopated crossover chug riffing. Then they mix in some of the sickest mid-song thrash crunch breakdowns this side of the 80s. They put all that on top of high-velocity punk-influenced thrash drumming and then spike it thoroughly with ripping thrash leads, piercing tremolo abuse, and top it all off with pissed off scouring powder and whiskey crossover shouts. The result is undeniably, irresistibly, catastrophically metal as fuck. Standout tracks are War Remains, Hanged by My Hand, and Nation of Fear. Taking the number eight slot, we have Into Nothingness. This is the second LP from Germany's Wilt, and they play some great death metal that lands about midway between old-school Swedish death metal and modern bolt thrower and ass fix spawn battle metal. There's a good bit of old-school sweet death around nowadays, and a growing amount of bleak, austere, grinding, war-themed death doom like Hail of Bullets, and the latter certainly has its roots in the former to some extent, but I've not really seen anyone deliberately blend the one back into the other like this. There are some passages that are clearly one thing and some that are clearly the other, rather than the entirety being a homogenized blend of the two styles. Of course, given the very obvious musical talent of everyone involved, and the fact that they quite clearly know what the hell they're doing, plus the completely complementary natures of the two styles, you'd expect this approach to work, and it does work, and the result is rather grand. And crushing. 
so grand and so crushing and so grinding and martial and grim that it grabbed the number eight slot out of the hundreds of death metal albums that I listened to in 2023. Standout tracks are Into Nothingness, The Tank, and Convulsive Possessions. In at number seven, we have Ultimate Abomination, the fifth LP from Body Farm. And what we have here is a magnificent specimen of pure Dutch death metal, but it ain't too goddamn beaucoup. It's a thick, riffy, beefy slab of modern Euro death that stands proudly erect, pumped full of battle-maddened warrior's blood, a girthy titan towering in a field of thousands. Ranging from thrashy and martial to somber and austere to epic and triumphant, it depicts a dystopian world torn asunder by tyrannical corruption and apocalyptic war, sort of like 2023. By turns reminiscent of Vader, Unleashed and Darken, this album is, in my humble opinion, one of the best death battle albums of the year, and it doesn't even require a batting order. Standout tracks are The Swamp, Empire of Inequity, and Soul Damnation. Taking the coveted number six slot is And Pathologist Wept. And this is yet another sophomore album. It's the follow-up to 2022's Cannibalistic Urbanistic, and you know it rips ass when it makes the pathologist cry. This is a chunky, riff-centric, pummeling, roof-lex steamroller of an album, and of unquestionably bastard parentage as well. This album was no doubt illicitly bred in some abandoned, hell-infested, radiation-choked Soviet bio-lab, spawned from the infected, sporulated, sludgy remnants of a discarded sample of old-school American death metal, stolen from an off-licensed Concord morgue during the age of Glasnost, and bred with the violently appropriated, grossly misamplified DNA of a nomadic, ultraviolent Siberian brutal tech death band, seized and imprisoned by the North gods while wandering snow-blind, grim, and morally insane in the frigid polar wastes. Of course, as is always the case with abandoned hell-infested biolabs, a bit of unintended contamination occurred, in this instance involving some kind of 90s power groove-based lubricant, a rabid wolf bat, and most of a bottle of Stoli. The result is a rollicking cerebral contusion of a good time with the lockjaw remorseless slavering bite of the Ove Charka, the brutality of an unlicensed gulag, the bloody whipcrack bite of the Emperor's milk-soaked knout, and the happy-go-lucky, frolicky fun of an off-kilter heavy metal roller coaster with a more modern feel. Standout tracks are And Pathologist Wept, Cephalic Obliteration, and Necropolis is Yours. Halfway to the top at number five is Veneration of the Dead. This is the debut album from Finland's Dead Talks, and it's yet another top ten death metal album in a year full of great death metal. But Veneration of the Dead isn't really a debut at all. Spawned from the demise of Corpse Molester Cult in 2019 after 14 years in the trade, tracing lineage back beyond that to Funeral Jacket, founded in 1999, it's self-born from the fragments of Kazi, which dates back to 1991. These are all vastly experienced musicians who've been in the death metal game since day one, and it shows. This monster of an initial incursion lands somewhere between old-school sweet death and modern Euro death, hitting that crushing, uplifting, down-pulling grand old sweet spot perfectly. It's heavy, it's driving, it's crushing, and in places, it's even a bit crusty. The musicianship and songcraft, both top tier throughout. Expect really well composed driving power chord riffing with plenty of crushing death chugs and lots of artisan grade thematic leads and riffs, some of them exotic feeling, some of them morbid and macabre, some of them black as the pits of hell, but all of them damned effective. Expect expert maximum momentum shifting use of tempo change, both subtle and overt, supported by a big, solid, reliable bedrock of tight, Spartan-filled traditional rhythm structures and the requisite machine gun double bass. Most importantly, expect standout, maximum effect, zero-loss riff transitions, because you're damn sure going to get them. The only thing better than a badass riff is a badass riff that leads perfectly into the next badass riff. Make no mistake about it, Dead Talk know exactly what the fuck they're doing, and they've turned out a world-class death metal album for their debut. Well, Really, their fourth debut since 1991. Standout tracks are Son of the Nameless One, 508, and track five, which I can't say the title of because you can't say on YouTube. Of course, you can't say on YouTube either, but that's beside the point. Close your eyes. Imagine a crust punk version of a bolt thrower album. Now, open your eyes. Coming in at number four is Too Young to Die. This is the debut LP from Spain's Landing Zone, and they kick ass. For all that I always call this list the top 10 metal albums of whatever year it is, 
Every now and again, a crust punk album will make the list. Like when Dispit took the number seven spot in 2021 with Total Death, Total Live, or when Wolf Brigade's Run with the Hunted took the number 10 spot back in 2017. The fact is, sometimes the crust punk album will be right in my wheelhouse, and I'm not going to exclude it from the list over the fact that it's not metal. If I like it, I like it. And that's the case here with Too Young to Die. Just as modern bolt throwers spawn battle metal, that's what I'm going to call it from now on because war metal is taken. Just as stuff like Hail of Bullets, Just Before Dawn, and Creeping Flesh rely heavily on tempo changes, forceful field changes, and non-traditional thematic elements in order to evoke a bleak, chaotic, death-strewn war hell, so does Landing Zone employ exotic leads, doomish velocity throttling, and dialogue and other samples, blending them with a high-octane, bulldozing, overdriven crust punk bass to form an alloy that we might call Battle Crust were we so minded invoking the horror, futility, and surreality of the U.S. military intervention in Vietnam. Standout tracks are Blinded Eyes of Sorrow, Speed of Light, and Drowning. Taking the number three slot, we have Glacial Domination from Frozen Soul. Frozen Soul, out of Fort Worth, Texas, burst on the death metal scene in 2021 with their debut LP Crypt Device, following a demo, two splits, and two singles. And in my little corner of metal Twitter, it seemed like it got a pretty good reception. Some people elsewhere dragged it for not bringing anything new to the table, which may be a fair cop, I guess. Personally, I really liked it. It made my honorable mention list for 2021, but it didn't quite make the top 10. It took an effective, simplified approach to death metal, visceral, jungle rot style, less is more meat and potatoes riffing, and an autopsy-esque use of tempo and pacing, with nods to old-school Sweet Death in the production, drumming, and the tremolo picking style. Now, Glacial Domination, as good as the debut was, this is a big step up, all the way up to number three. Everything is better. The vocals are improved in timber, nimbleness, and production. The riffing and lead work are more varied, catchier, and more compelling, and they show an increase in technicality as well, in a good way. There are metric shit-tons of sweet, neck-snapping, syncopated chugs, in addition to the usual suspect crushing straight chugs. And there are plenty of pinch harmonics, tremolo abuse, and other sick musical exclamatories, too, to give that rose a stank face thorn. And there are lots of those small yet so effective, subtle tempo and feel shifts that make good death metal into great death metal. There's an expanded, excellent employment of samples, keys, scents, and atmospherics to extend the storytelling, and the production is a bit bigger, significantly crisper and cleaner, and has less murk in the mid-range, which I honestly think suits the material better and shows it to better advantage. As good as Crypt of Ice was, Glacial Domination is that much better. Standout tracks are Arsenal of War, Death and Glory, and the eponymous track Frozen Soul. Coming in at number two is Decay, and this is yet another debut album, this time from Finnish crust death metalers Guts. Three of the tracks were released in 2022 as singles, and other than that, this is not just their debut LP, but their first release of any sort, and it is a motherfucker. It's a torqued out high traction graveyard low rider churning across the cracked charnel death metal plains, flared with pinstripes of Finnish chaos and driven by propulsive catchy old school riffing and skin work, spraying bludgeoning chunks of groove and harmonic shrapnel like so much bloody gravel, and steamrolling everything in its path like a remorseless crust armor juggernaut of death, carnage, and destruction headed straight for the top and that ass. If you miss this album, you need to fix that now, or it might show up in your front yard. And you don't want that. Standout tracks are Bitter Stream, Nuclear Genocide, and Galvanistic Reanimation. And finally, taking album of the year for 2023 is Just Before Dawn with A War Too Far. And this band just keeps getting better and better. 2020's An Army at Dawn LP just missed the top 10, garnering a well-earned honorable mention. 2021's In the Realm of Ash and Sorrow EP caught the number two EP of the year slot. And 2022's Battlesite Zeroing EP scored EP of the year. Not too surprising then that A War Too Far, their fifth full length, would take album of the year. Just Before Dawn is one of those abandon all hope ye who enter here battle metal bands I mentioned during the Landing Zone segment. Adherents of the bleak, austere, grinding, war-themed, death-doom style that I referred to when discussing Wilt earlier. Music that, as I've said elsewhere, embodies the horror, brutality, triumph, and despair of war. 
by combining martial, desolate, and epic elements of old-school Swedish death metal, modern Euro death, and classic asphyx-style death doom. And at this point, with this release, just before dawn are kings of that war-torn, blood-drenched, much-disputed hill. You can look to a war too far as the archetype of this style of death metal. It's all the best that this style is, and all the best that this style can be. And it's my album of the year for 2023. Standout tracks are A War Too Far, The Odyssey of Echo Company, and We Few. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for joining me today and listening to me talk about my favorite albums from 2023. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please take a second and give the video a like. That's an easy way to tell YouTube that you enjoyed the video and that you want to see more like it. If you're interested in checking out any of the bands I discussed, all of them except for Enforced are on my Bandcamp fan page, which is linked in the show notes below. So, thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, get new friends. Until next time, keep those horns up high. Take care. Standout tracks are Son of the Nameless One, 508, and track 5, which I can't say the title of. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. God damn it. listening to Old Man Metal's musings. All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us.